So you may have just picked up your iPad 11th generation, and you might be trying to figure out exactly how you can use your particular iPad now. Now the thing I will definitely tell you is that these iPads are a very good value. They're really not too expensive, and I love having these types of iPads that I can recommend to people because they're not really super overly priced, and they're pretty well priced when it kind of comes down to it. So if you want to, you know, the first thing I'd recommend kind of thinking about when you're buying an iPad like this, number one, is to make sure you're putting some sort of screen protector or some sort of case on your iPad. That is kind of one of the biggest key takeaways I can recommend to anybody because the last thing you're going to want to do is to go through and have an iPad or any device that's not protected. So any sort of case, any sort of screen protector, just go and throw it on here. That's going to be the best thing you can do for your iPad. Now on the front side, you're getting your 11 inch display. So there's not like an insane amount of bezel on this thing. It looks pretty good for the most part. You have a little bit of bezel around it, but like I said, it's not anything super crazy. It's nothing we haven't seen before. You do have a front-facing camera, and this camera is landscape. So this camera is kind of right at the front. It's like right here, depending on which way you're looking at it. So it is kind of nice because it is, you know, this way. Most people, I think, use their iPad this way anyway. So it's already situated at the very top. Now, if you look at the very top portion, you're not really going to get anything up here, but you are going to get your volume buttons. It really just depends on which way your iPad is situated. But for me, my volume buttons are right up here. To the left side, I have my power button. So I can go through and use this power button to you know, power off my iPad. I'll show you how to do that all in a second. But it can also invoke Siri as well, which is nice. I have some speakers on the left side right up here. On the bottom, I have just an accessory port, which allows you to go and connect some sort of like magic keyboard or magic accessories or any Apple accessory. You can go and connect it via this three prong system down at the bottom. Then you also have your USB type C port, which is really nice. USB type C is amazing. I love having that. And you're going to be essentially getting that type of capability right there. At the very back, you have your camera setup. So as you can see, you have a single camera setup right up here with a little bit of a sensor and an Apple logo right up here. And that's kind of it. There's not really anything super insane here. It's a pretty basic type of layout, which could be a nice thing depending on who you are. So that is kind of how to understand at least the exterior. Now on top of that, you also have to remember that when you first unlock your iPad, you're going to go through the initial setup. So it's going to tell you to log into your Apple ID and create an Apple ID and who you are and all that stuff. So I've already saved the time of kind of going through that process. So hopefully you're past that process. You have a couple ways of turning on your iPad. You can either tap onto the display like this to turn it on, or you can click on the power button on the side to turn it on as well. So you have a few different options there. If you tap on the display one time, you can go and power it up just like this. Now what you can do is you can swipe up from the bottom if you want to to go inside of your iPad. You can swipe down from the top right corner if you want to access your control center, just right up there. And then you also get some notifications here. So I don't have any notifications right now, but if I did, they would basically populate and show up right here, which I think is another really cool thing going on there as well. Now I can also, if I want to edit up my home screen, I can also just hold down on my home screen lock screen just like this. And I can go and see this panel. This will allow me to go and customize my lock screen in and of itself. So this is actually something that's really cool. I can just go through and just, you know, edit up my lock screen and do all sorts of things like that. And what I can do as well is I can go through and I can click on customize at the very bottom and it'll allow me to customize my lock screen even more. So this is something that's actually very cool. If I want to, I can add widgets, I can move things around, I can change fonts and stuff. So I'd recommend everyone to just kind of go into this panel and have a little bit of fun because it genuinely is a really cool type of experience that you can kind of have here as well. So have some fun with it. I'd recommend you kind of just play around with it because it is a really cool type of system that we have here. If you're ready, you can click done, tap into here, and you can swipe up. Now this is your home screen. No matter where you go, if you swipe up from the bottom just like how we did, you will always come back home. You'll have your status bar at the top, so you have your time and date up here. You have your battery percentage and stuff right there. And Like I said, if you swipe down from the top, you can get into your control center. If you swipe down from the top left, you'll get into your notification drawer, aka your lock screen like how we saw before. The advantage of this is that you can still go and get and you can access your quick toggles by swiping to the side, but you can still see your notifications wherever you are. These widgets and app icons and you know wallpapers can all be edited. So if you don't like the way certain things look, you can change everything around here. Now, a really big thing to keep in mind here too. Now, a really big thing to keep in mind here too with this type of iPad is that for the most part, it is a really good looking iPad for the most part. Like these things look really, really nice. 
you're going to be able to get all of your app icons right up here for the most part. So you're going to be able to go through and get you know, these widgets. So you can hold down on a widget like this if you want to. And you're going to be able to go ahead and remove a widget if you want to. You can go ahead and move it around just like so. If you can hold it down and just move a widget around if you want to, which is a really nice thing. You can also increase the size of a widget or decrease the size of a widget, depending on which way you want to go as well. So you have that type of capability. And you can do the same thing with app icons too. You can move an app icon wherever you want to. You can remove an app icon by hitting on the little minus button and pretty much going down that direction. You can swipe up and then come back to your normal display. Now you have multiple different lock screen you, know, you can choose from. So you can swipe around, see whichever one you like, but you do have that type of capability there when it kind of comes down to it from that particular perspective. Now, there are a lot of apps you can choose from. There's the messages application, which allows you to go and message people. There's the web browser, which allows you to go and use the internet. Um, there's the Apple Music icon, so you can listen to Apple Music. And notice what I'm doing, I'm swiping up and I'm coming out of that application. Now, if I wanted to, I could go through and I can go inside of my app, but I could also swipe between these applications. So that little bar at the bottom, if I just grab it and kind of drag it around, I can go ahead and basically choose a different type of application, the one that I've already opened. So it is actually kind of nice. I think that's kind of another really nice thing you got going on there too. So that is kind of another really cool thing kind of going on there as well. You can also swipe up from the top like this, and you can see all the recent applications that you've opened. The advantage of this is that you can see all the apps. If you want to go back to a previous application, you can swipe between them. But you can also swipe up from these applications if you just want to go ahead and remove them from your memory, basically. Now, you don't have to do it. It's not a necessity, but it is kind of a cool thing that you can do. So you do have that type of advantage here as well. It's just a kind of a good habit to clear out those things. But like I said, you don't really have to do it. It's not like the biggest deal in the world. Now, your app store is the application which allows you to download all your applications and everything like that, which is really cool. If you swipe all the way to the end, you'll see all your widgets. So if you want to, you can go and like check out different widgets that you have. You can go and customize them here too. You can see it's kind of a little wonky. I don't know why they did it like this, but you have the type of capability when it kind of comes down to it. Now, if you want to, if you want to enable Siri, you just have to hold down this power button right up here. You'll hold it down and then you'll basically come into this panel, which allows you to invoke Siri. And you'll see it basically right at the bottom. If you go ahead and hold down the power button and the volume down button though, that's how you can turn off your iPad. So you hold down these two buttons until you see this pop up, let go, and then you can swipe to power down and that will go ahead and power down your iPad. If you, power, if you want to power back on, you just have to hold down the power button right up here on the top left and that will power up your iPad right after that. So you do have some sort of capability when it comes down to that side too. Now, if you go inside of your settings application, this is a pretty big one. I'd recommend every single iPad owner to go inside of your settings right now and get used to this app. If you're looking for a certain setting, if you're looking for a certain something, you can click right up here in the search button and you can go ahead and search for it. So you can go and search for a particular setting if you're looking for something, or you can also just scroll through and try to just find a certain setting or a certain option. So you can go through and kind of see all the stuff you're looking for. You have you know, your Apple Pencil support here, you have a lot of other capability here as well. I'd recommend going into your general setting right up here though, clicking on software update and just software updating your iPad. There's probably already an iPad update as soon as you go and buy your iPad. So I'd recommend going through, clicking on the update now button and just installing the update when you get the chance because that's going to end up saving you a lot of time in the future and a lot of headache because there might already be some issues that Apple's fixed but you just haven't updated yet. So update your iPad and that's a really big thing I'd recommend doing here too. Beyond that, it's pretty much the same old, same old. It's just pretty much the exact same thing as you'd probably expect. It's a really good iPad, and like I said, you can swipe up to come back home. So, like I said, I'd recommend just putting a case on your particular iPad, putting some sort of screen protector. That might be the best option here, but I think you genuinely made a really good choice. These are really good systems, and uh, I would look forward to you using it for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, though, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.